Sir Thay, the absence of Thay. As of 1492, it has a population of 62,000. Its main commerce is caravan traffic, fishing, and subsistence farming. The badge of the Tharsh is the Terilvrath, or Three Strivings, and represents the three major activities in the Tharsh, fishing, agriculture, and defense of Thay. Sir Thay is a strip of poor soil hill country between the northern edge of the Thayan Plateau and Lake Molsentir, and serves as a defense and launching point for Rashomon invasions. Locals make a living farming the surrounding floodplain, fishing on Lake Molsentir, and trading with Thescian merchants from the north. All of this doesn't make much money, and most of Sir Thay is a place of poverty and hard living. Nobles, Red Wizards, and their acolytes live in mansions and towers on the eastern heights above the city, away from the filth of the poor in the marshes. Since the Tharshianess must pay for food supplies sent to her Tharsh, Sirthe is often hungry. The wealthy keep their larders full, and the soldiers eat the castle stores and the shelves of all food shops bare, leaving little for the common folk except what the fishermen bring in and what they can glean from the wilds of the edge of the Surmarsh. The capital city of Sirthe is also called Sirthe. It began as Castle Sirthe, a fort defending from Rashomon invasions, and fisherfolk supplied its kitchen. Eventually, a city grew around it, becoming the fishing city it is today. Because of this, it is well fortified. It has high stone walls with many sturdy towers, fortified gates, sally ports, ballista, and other artillery, and citadels garrisoned by crack troops. The city of Sirthe is divided into three sections. West Sulk, a dirt, crime-ridden shantytown, home to fisherfolk, poor Thayans and outlanders escaping debts and bounties, Sir Towers, a huge stone tower pointed toward Rashomon and kitted out with ballista, trebuchets, and catapults, and True Sir Thay, self-titled by the wealthy nobles who live here in walled mansions. Sir Thay is often plagued by disease brought by insects of the Surmarsh. The stench of rotting vegetation is common here, worsening in the summer. The humidity and stench in the summer is unbearable, driving out anyone capable of leaving. Rashomon controls most of Lake Molsentir, and they sink any Thayan warships, so their harbor is small, and their fishing ships are small felucas that are dragged inland at the end of each day. Most of the supplies, food, and income are sent to the troops which are garrisoned here, and the population is left to fend for itself. The poverty and depression here spawned a thriving criminal underground. The Tharshian gave troops permission to find and punish any criminals on the spot, which of course is abused daily. The crime guilds are powerful and dispose of particularly troublesome guards while bribing or extorting officials to look the other way. Those with no connection to a crime guild are helpless against the soldiers, though. The current Tharshianess, as of 1492, uses her spies to pit the poor and fisherfolk against each other, keeping crime low-level rather than the more complex intrigues that plague other Tharshas. She tends to personally kill anyone who commits acts of torture or casual murder, so those are uncommon here, and most crimes are petty theft. Surmarsh This dismal, disease-ridden swamp is claimed by Thay and inhabited by tribes of lizardmen. Most of these tribes are theoretically allied with the Red Wizards and consider service in the Thayan military an honor. Sometimes, Thayan nobles venture into the swamp to hunt a black dragon, roper, or otyug as trophies or for potion ingredients. The Surmarch is also home to Slithermorphs and the undead called Scuzz. Quote, This cold and dreary place lies beyond the effects of the Red Wizard's weather magic and is exposed to seemingly endless rains as the cold air of Ashenath and Rashomon meets the warm stationary air mass artificially maintained over the Plateau of Thay. Fierce thunderstorms, even in the depths of winter, are not uncommon here." End quote. Lizardfolk constantly fight over control of this land. They have a deal with the Red Wizards. They don't bother the Thayans, and the Thayans don't annihilate them. This does not apply to foreigners who they capture or kill and turn over to the next Thayan patrol for a bounty of 10 gold pieces worth of food per captive or corpse. Lizardfolk consider it an honor to serve in the Thayan military, and Thayan nobles sometimes hire them as porters and guides when hunting in the Surmarsh. In West Sulk, they say a coven of green hags invite and control a succession of black dragons to layer in the Surmarsh, maneuvering the worms into confronting and fighting formidable intruders. The Long Portage Where the River Thay descends the first escarpment is the Long Portage. The escarpment is steep, and although the river has carved a gentle slope down it, the waters are still rough and hazardous, making boat travel either way dangerous. Ships are required to stop here and be ported across, along with their inventory, by zombies. 
sometime in the 1000s DR, the Guild of Porters charged exorbitant fees to haul vessels over land. This angered the Red Wizard Shavas Tam, who slew them all and transformed them into zombies. Since then, the Tam family has handled the portage here. And yes, this is the same Tam family that yours truly, Zaz Tam, is a part of. Feymount, the height of Thay. As of 1492, it has a population of 21,000. Its main commerce is mining, local retail, and general exports. The badge of the Tharsh is the Vor, or Heart of the Realm, and represents the mountain at the heart of Thay. Now, this Tharsh consists of the plateau that is made up by the second escarpment. In second edition, this plateau and the Tharsh were both called Thaymount. In third edition, the whole plateau is called High Thay, and Thaymount is specifically the chain of volcanic mountains on it, but Thaymount was used to refer to the Tharsh and the area as a whole most of the time. In 5th edition, the plateau is called the Ruthamar Plateau, and the plateau and mountains collectively were called the Thaymount or High Thay. Thaymount, also known as High Thay, consists of the Ruthamar Plateau above the second escarpment and a range of volcanic mountains. Quote, a hundred-mile chain of fang-like ridges and smoldering cinder cones whose highest point is more than 17,000 feet high. Minor eruptions are common, making large chunks of the plateau uninhabitable due to the ash falls and clouds of sulfurous fumes." End quote. The distant snow-topped peaks of Thaymount are visible from almost any part of the country. Thaymount originally composed mainly of homes and training grounds of Thay's armies, used as reserves to draw from. There were a few gold mines, but it was mostly wilderness. When Zaz Tam took over, he chose to rule from here and it was transformed. His presence meant that Zolkir started keeping residences here. This meant high-ranking, ambitious red wizards moved here too in order to not be left out, and then this attracted lesser wizards, noble families, and the wealthiest priests to all make homes here. This transformed the barren foothills into terrace gardens around palatial mansions. Homes here serve as refuges during the hottest months, escaping the heat of the rest of Thay. It is the most heavily patrolled Tharsh with the highest security. Outlanders, slaves, and commoners are forbidden entrance unless accompanied and watched over by a red wizard. Thaymount experiences frequent tremors, smoke plumes, and sulfurous wind from its volcanoes. It is arid and barren due to ashfall, but outside the immediate range of volcanoes, Thaymount is verdant grasslands with a few pine forests. There are a few towns and nameless settlements where commoners farm to supply the estates, but there are no cities. The northeastern section is all wilderness and is referred to as Wild High. It is roamed by gnolls, orcs, and goblins who forage, farm, hunt, and keep away from the humans lest they are forced into Thay's armies. The cliffs of the Ruthamar Plateau are honeycombed with caverns that used to house Thay's armies, but are now abandoned since soldiers live in similar caves on the Thay Mount range itself. Gnolls, darkened beasts, and captured monsters all dwell in these new barracks in the north and northwest sections of Thaymount, while highly trained orc and orog legions dwell in the caves in the south and southeastern sections of the mountains. Also in the mountains are many red wizard laboratories dedicated to magical breeding programs, with blood orcs being their greatest success. Most of the magic items Thay is known for exporting are created in laboratories in Thaymount as well. Weather is strictly controlled by mages here to ensure that it is well watered and only rains at nighttime. However, snowfall is not uncommon, especially as you get up to the mountains. At the peak of the mountains are the soot-covered glaciers where the rivers Eltar, La Pindrar, and Umber begin. The many volcanic rifts also serve as forges. The Citadel. Built by the Ba'atith, it is an ancient stronghold of tunnels and underground chambers encircling the caldera of an extinct volcano in one of the highest peaks of Thaymount. While the capital of Thay is El Tabar, the citadel is where Zastam spends much of his time and rules from, and it was the capital in 4th edition. Its defenses are almost all undead, along with many hanging spells that were created a long time ago and that Zastam can trigger whenever he wants no matter where he is. It is a dedicated fortress and research area that lacks the luxurious rooms you'd expect for a ruler. Passages descend from the deepest halls of the citadel in two directions, north under the mountain range to the Doom Vault, and south to a gigantic cavern that thrums with crackling blue fire and houses a floating rock of immense size that is rumored to be larger than many fortresses. The latter is the Athora and is the reason why so many spellcasters are born in Thay when compared to the rest of the world. 
The Doom Vault. Created by the Red Wizard Kazit Ghoul, he studied and explored Faerun's most dangerous dungeons and constructed his own. It took so long to build, he became a lich in order to finish it, and used it to lure adventurers so that he could devour their souls to fuel his phylactery. It is a trap-filled labyrinth defended by red wizards, golems, undead, and various monsters. Many red wizards know spells that can teleport hostile intruders into the Doom Vault. The Doom Vault is the location of the adventure Dead and Thay in the book Tales from the Yawning Portal for 5th edition, so if you want more information on it, it's completely mapped out there, and it's also where Zaztam keeps his phylactery, in addition to the phylacteries of many of his lich servants. Fazilhar, the future of Thay. Population as of 1492 is 14,000. Its main commerce is caravan traffic, sporadic inns, and subsistence farming. Its heraldry is the Navroth, or Watchful Guardian, and represents the war-ready border guardianship of Thay. Historically, Thazilhar was a prosperous farming region in the 1300s, but it suffered devastating losses during battles between Thay and Mulherond, leaving it mostly uninhabited by 1368. Though caravans occasionally traveled through the region en route to Durpar and Rarin, and a few small pirate settlements dotted its coastline, by 1372 it was described as, quote, a desolate and forbidding land, plagued by restless undead and hungry monsters from the mountains, end quote. By the 1490s, the Tharsh was home to roving shepherds, a handful of innkeepers, and horse and oxen traders along the trade roads. Trade with Mulharan has become a notable part of the region's economy. Like Sirthay is to Rashomon, and Lapindra is to Aglarond, Thazilhar serves as a border defense region against Mulharan. The region features hilly countryside, with no cities or named settlements. Its land is verdant and well-watered, teeming with game due to the sparse population. During the Battle of Thazilhar, the land was devastated by the demon Eltab. The Tharsh was described as one vast graveyard and is still believed to be haunted. Many tales are told of undead hordes rampaging through homes, but travelers to the region know these are exaggerated, and at most encounter three skeletons or ghouls at a time. Economically, Thazilhar controls the land routes between Thay and Mulherond, acting as the primary conduit for trade between the two. Its main source of income is from bridge fees for crossing the River of Dawn into Thay, which are set at 1 silver piece for Thayans and 10 gold pieces for others. Many merchants opt to sell their goods at a reduced rate to Thayans on the Mulharandi side of the bridge to avoid these fees. In order to prevent any of the Mulharandi or Thayans, who travel to and from Mulharand, from getting the idea that invading Thay through Thazilhar would be easy, Red Wizards frequently send their apprentices to spell hunt monsters in the Tharsh, giving them the instructions to, quote, impress everyone but soldiers of Thay, and spare no brigands or horse thieves, end quote. This policy allows spells to be hurled without warning, especially off the trade roads. This also keeps control of what Thayans call the Monster Prowl, which is when monsters from the mountains descend upon the lowlands in winter and spring in search of food when their regular prey grows scarce. Thazar Keep This is the keep on the path of Thazar, one of the only two passes through the Sunrise Mountains, the other being Daggertooth Pass and Goros. I did talk about the Pass of Thazar in my last video because I incorrectly thought it was in the Tharsh of Pyarados, but it is actually in Thazilhar. So if you want some details on the pass, you can check out the Tharshes of Thay Part 1 at the 27 minute 10 second mark. In addition to the info there, there is also the fortress guarding the pass called Thazar Keep. I couldn't find any information on it from any edition source book. I did recently read the novel Unclean by Richard Lee Byers, which features a battle at Thazar Keep, but the only thing I could really glean from it was that in addition to the fortress itself, there seems to be a village or some sort of settlement around it. I assume it popped up in order to feed the soldiers and maintain their equipment, not to mention a rest stop for travelers. Tyra Tauros, the Bounty of Thay. As of 1492, it has a population of 2.7 million. Its main commerce are exports, including various cash crops, spirits, and finished goods, retail sales, destination travel, and banking. The heraldry of the Tharsh is the Haranmul, or Peerless Bounty, and represents the food and wine produced by this Tharsh. Tyra Turos is often referred to as the Heart, Backbone, and Big Belly of Thay by anyone who isn't a noble or powerful Red Wizard. 
It is probably one of, if not the most important Tharsh when it comes to Thay's economy. It is renowned for its abundant agricultural output, producing a wide variety of vegetable crops and large quantities of grain, and it is a huge center of trade and caravan traffic, thanks to the presence of the high road in Eastern Way. Tax stations, known locally as toll booths, operate continuously but are reasonably priced. Empty wagons pass through tolls for free, while laden wagons are charged one silver. These regular toll collections, combined with the Tharsh's bountiful harvest, contribute to the Tharsh's prosperity. The current Tharshianess, Elevir Hyadra Hondor, ensures that the wealth generated within the Tharsh is distributed even to its lowliest residents. The people who live here are fairly content. They enjoy a peaceful, orderly, and well-governed existence. The roads are safe, and the presence of Red Wizard patrols and Probity Corps spies is a small price to pay for the comfort and security they provide. In Tyraturos, one can purchase virtually anything and commission skilled crafters to create custom items. The Tharsh of Tyraturos, like many Tharshes in Thay, has a city of the same name. The city Tyraturos, as of 1368, had a population of 50,000 permanently, however it had over 100,000 with seasonal caravan traffic. I assume this population has increased significantly in the last century. Tyraturos is the third largest city in Thay sprawling across the Tharsh's grasslands. It is quite literally the crossroads of Thay, as the two most important trade routes, the High Road and the Eastern Way, intersect here. The city was originally built by Mulharan as a trading and caravan town, and it continues to thrive on trade. Buildings in Tyraturos feature the slender minarets, onion domes, and spires inspired by the architecture of Simfar, which the city's original architects admired. The city is unwalled but has a central fortified citadel garrisoning 8,000 troops. In the late 1300s, Tyraturos was described as, quote, one of the filthiest and most unpleasant cities in a filthy and unpleasant land, end quote. However, by the 1490s, significant improvements have been made under recent leadership, including the construction of sewers, the relaying of roads, replacement of many buildings, and the establishment of a highly trained and professional city watch that is well-paid and unlikely to succumb to corruption. The Tharshianess ensures regular revels, street music performances, and plays are held at newly constructed theaters. She even organizes trips from other Tharshas to Tyraturos for, quote, a play and a day of shopping. The marketplace of Tyraturos is known as, quote, the place where anything and anyone can be bought. It boasts a huge slave market where basically any race can be found. Any item of contraband can be bought as well, including spell components, forbidden books, maps, secrets of the various Zulkirs, weapons, and other items damaging to the Theans. This treasonous trade is punished by instant death, but generous bribes by merchants keep this away, at least as of 1368. In the 1370s, the Tharshian converted to the worship of Bane, leading to a new zeal for law and a crackdown on corruption among his officers. As of the 1490s, I'm not sure what the current Tharshianess thinks of the illegal activity. Tyraturos was once rife with political strife, serving as the background for feuding nobles, merchant cabals backed by a Zulkir, ambitious red wizards, and wealthy non-noble families. However, Zaztam declared the city neutral ground for such disputes, enforcing this with a series of public executions. Now, the peace of Tyraturos is highly valued, and citizens fight to maintain it. As a result, trade and commerce have soared, and fortunes are being made. And those are the Tharshes of Thay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and remember to subscribe for more D&D-related content.